guys, unfortunately, there's just not going to be a Steam Deck release this month. However, we've got a game update. Hey guys, Trick here. Hope you're having a great day. As 2021 winds to a close and we hunker down for the holidays, and it sure would have been nice to sit by the fire and play some games on our shiny new Steam Decks and get some good old gaming in while enjoying the holiday season. But that doesn't mean we can't talk about some of the latest games that have come to the market, as well as some of the newest news hovering around SteamOS as well as Proton. I've been covering the Steam Deck for well over six months at this point, and now that we got a chance to watch and digest the Steamworks Developing Without a Deck guide, I think that my setup is pretty much spot on. Now I've covered this topic in several different videos. I'll post a link up to the playlist up at the top right so y'all can learn about the hardware, software, operating system, and all that stuff, but I'm going to net it all out in a little less than 30 seconds. My setup uses an AMD APU matching the core count and frequency for the CPU and GPU while overclocking the memory as fast as possible. Now, thanks to the leakers, as well as a lot of well-established creators here on YouTube, this setup matches the performance in nearly all of the games we've seen to this point, validating my setup and setting some realistic expectations for the deck. Doom Eternal hits 58 FPS, 37 FPS in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and a locked 60 FPS in Resident Evil 2. If y'all wanna see some more games, I'll post a link to my uh, validation video down in the description below. With that out of the way, I think it's a great time to test out some of the latest games that have come to market. And there's also a topic I haven't touched on in this YouTube series, and that is just how well will the deck handle some of the external, you know, companies' game launchers like uh, Rockstar Launcher, Epic Game Store, and all of those things. So, I, you know, rather than make two separate videos, I figure now is a good time to knock out two birds with one stone. So let's get to it. I got a tourney coming up with Halo Infinite with my Twitch community, so I thought I could get in a few extra rounds while doing some testing out with the deck. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, it is listed as borked over at ProtonDB.com. Since it's delivered through Steam, I can try the Proton Experimental, Proton 6.3-8, and even try out Proton GE, but none of these settings will load. Judging by the minimum hardware specs, they list the GTX 1050 Ti is the bare minimum of graphic cards. And you guys know how I feel about that one, right? Regardless, I'm going to keep trying to get that running on my deck. Now, I do have a good feeling that with the resolution change to 800p, I do think that the Steam Deck is going to run really well on this setup, but that's going to have to wait for another video. Moving on. Earlier in November, Valve has finally enabled BattleEye Anti-Cheat into their Proton Experimental and Steam Beta Client releases, so many long-awaited games should start to pick up some momentum as we get closer to the official release. Now, I'm still waiting for official support, but for now, let's give Rainbow Six Siege a whirl. Loading up my standard benchmarking setup, high details with 100% render resolution, running the built-in benchmark hits above 60 FPS for 1% lows, which is a huge sigh of relief for this beloved shooter. Now, I can't comment on the overall match quality because I still can't manage to jump into any quick plays, but this is a great step in the right direction for anti-cheat in Linux. Well done, Valve. Now let's wander into some of the other launchers. Far Cry 6 was launched just earlier in November, and I think is a good time to try it out on the deck. Unfortunately, it's not offered through Valve or Steam just yet, so I am going to have to go into either the Ubisoft launcher or through the Epic Game Store. But in order to do that, we're going to have to use Lutris. Now this is going to be a huge sticking point throughout the rest of our video. Valve has confirmed that we should be able to load external applications through flat plaques and I hope through the terminal command line. So if those things don't come to fruition, <laughs> you can take all the rest of the stuff I'm going to say in this video uh, and throw it out the window. But I have high confidence in uh, both Valve as well as the community in trying to find a way to get this kind of stuff onto the deck. Now Lutris, it's time for you to shine my friend. When in Manjaro, open a terminal and just do a quick sudo pacman syu lutris and follow the prompts to get it installed. After that, open up lutris and go down to sources over on the left, then click community installers and search for Far Cry 6. Sure enough, there is an installer. Let's check it out. Ah, dang it. It does not appear to be fully working just yet. That really does suck. All right, well, how about Assassin's Creed Valhalla? Now, I know it's been out for over a year, but it is still considered a next-gen game, so let's search and see if it's there. Oh, look, there it is. 
Now, another interesting quirk with Lutris is sometimes you will run into issues with the loading. So hopefully if you get an error code, you can do some Google searching in order to see if other people have solved your problem. Apparently the launcher needs some additional packages. Pseudo Pac-Man, SYU, Lib32, GNU or whatever. And we're back. Loading up the internal benchmarking tool, 800p at low settings lands around 45 FPS and medium hits around 40-ish FPS, which isn't terrible. When in the game's opening section though, it feels really fluid and I think this is going to be a great handheld experience for the deck. The next big game I wanted to play out on the deck is Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Despite its lackluster launch, I'm still wanting to ride around Los Santos and relive my golden years of gaming. The Rockstar Launcher, it's not the best in the world, but sure enough, searching for San Andreas Definitive Edition in Lutris, I am able to navigate the store to run and install the game. In the intro cinematic, after getting in the police car, the game runs at a bumpy 40 FPS, with some instances going to about 60, while others are closer to 30. At 800p in medium quality settings, this game could use a bit of TLC and optimization from Rockstar, Wine, or even the Steam Deck communities. Regardless, I think it plays just fine, especially considering it was released as a 30 FPS console game way back in the early 2000s. Next up, Diablo 2 Resurrected. I have played hours of over a decade ago with the classic version of the game, and with D2R, I don't want to openly admit how many hours I got going into it. Regardless, D2R is the definition of what a remaster should look like. Fortunately for the Linux and the Steam Deck communities, Lutris saves the day yet again, providing a painless install process of Battle.net. Install the game, and I am free to slay some demons. Loading up my hammered in for a Chaos Sanctuary run, 800p at low quality settings gives me a solid 50 FPS experience. I bet with a bit of tweaking, 60 FPS is not a far reach for the deck. And in case you were curious, Overwatch runs perfectly fine at medium detail settings where I managed to snipe in some heals during a quick play round. Now, if y'all were curious about how Call of Duty Warzone runs, I am able to install it through the launcher, but anytime I try to actually open the application, it just crashes back to the launcher, which is a huge disappointment to a lot of people, but I'm hoping with some time and a little bit of extra work from uh, the community, this might be a possibility in the future. All right, last but not least is the Epic Game Store. And you guys know what? Let's throw the Hail Mary pass. Let's go ahead and see if Fortnite's gonna work and let's see if it'll actually run. Sure enough, if we go into Lutris and go back into community installers and type in Fortnite, there is an installer for it and it actually runs really straightforward and I hit no bumps getting into the launcher. Now remember, Fortnite uses the easy anti-cheat, so joining a match right now will not work. However, Valve has committed to working with the EIC and developers on getting it enabled, so we can at least run a recorded match from their tournament series to see how it'll run. Sure enough, at 800p in medium detail settings, I'm landing between 40 and 70 FPS while watching my boy Booga win the FNCS Grand Royale Finals. And if the dips are not desirable, going down to low detail settings bumps frames up consistently above 80 FPS. Now, I'm not exactly sure what's holding up Valve or Epic at this point, but my goodness, guys, get EAC running on Linux. So that's four of the most popular game launchers that are out on the market, as well as a performance preview for some games that use some of the anti-cheat software that we're expecting to play on the deck. Now, there's clearly a lot more optimization to go on. I wasn't able to play Call of Duty or Crisis or Hitman 3, so clearly a lot more things to iron out from Proton, from Wine, and all the different compatibility software, but with the extra two months that Valve and all the community has for getting that stuff enabled, I am very pumped and excited to see just what we can do with our deck. As long as Valve is able to deliver on their anti-cheat compatibility within Proton and Wine and all that stuff, as well as actually delivering on the open platform that they've promised, guys, I am just pumped with what we're going to be able to do with our deck, and I'm very optimistic with just how well all these different types of games are going to perform. So that's the video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up and tell me down below what your favorite part of the video was. Share this video with your friends. We've got more reviews and Steam Deck content coming in the future, but we're going to be diving deep into it next week. So I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. I hope you all have a great day. We'll catch you in the next one, Dark Force.